Hey guys, so I wanted to dive into a subject that I think is not talked about enough in our industry and something that is very, very important to me. Those of you guys that have been following me, my business, my personal journey over the past couple of years, you guys know how important personal development and mental health is for me. This is something that I feel like is not talked about enough, especially when it comes to working in real estate or working in the real estate industry. The majority of people really just care about how much money is going into their pockets, whether it's a real estate agent, a um, property owner, whether it is a real estate broker, like nobody wants to talk about mental health and what we need to do to avoid burnout. So recently I did a post in our Facebook group. If you guys aren't a part of our 3,500 member locator and leasing agent Facebook group, you definitely need to be. I'll link it below. But recently I did a poll in the Facebook group about how many people have felt burnt out during their career. And this, this message, this question was brought up to leasing agents, uh, locators, uh, brokers, like it was shot out to everybody. And I would say between People who said that they are currently burnt out or people who said that they had previously been burnt out, there was only like 5% of people said that they had never experienced burnout. And this was out of like, I don't know, maybe like 20, 25 people. There was only like a small percentage of people said that they had never experienced burnout. And this is something that I personally have experienced a lot throughout my career. You know, um, they, I don't know who came up with this statistic, but something that they used to talk about a lot when I was working on site at a specific community is that the three most, um, the three most stressful times of somebody's life that somebody will may go through is dealing with death of a loved one, dealing with divorce or moving. This is something that I often was told when I was a leasing agent and it really always stuck with me. And it's very, very true. Like, I don't know of anything more stressful than those those three things, especially like when you're packing up everything, all the honking, <laughs> when you're packing up everything in your life and moving to a new location, regardless if it's down the street or if it's across the country, moving is extremely, extremely stressful. So if you think about it, if you're a real estate agent or if you're a leasing agent and you're dealing with people who are moving all day, every day, that is your career to work in that industry. You're constantly dealing with people who might be a little bit more intense than what they usually are because they're moving. It's stressful. Um, a lot of times people move for unpleasant reasons, whether they're getting a divorce or maybe they are starting a new job and like dealing with the nerves of that. Or um, like, I don't know, a lot of times a lot of times people are moving because they're either closing a chapter or starting a new chapter, um, which is kind of both the same thing. But regardless, what I'm trying to say is, is that when you are working in the industry and you're dealing with people that are moving, you're dealing with like high stress people, which in turn probably makes you more susceptible to be a high stress person yourself. Um, not to mention the fact that we're all, for the most part, working on some form of commission, which within itself creates like a whole hamster wheel of other problems. So today I wanted to talk about burnout and mental health and what can we do as real estate agents and leasing agents and people that are working in the industry of moving to protect ourselves and protect our energy. The first thing that I learned when I started going down like my personal development, mental health journey is knowing when it's okay to pause, knowing when it's okay to say, hey, I don't care how much money I potentially could make from this deal, or I don't care, um, like I just need to take take a moment and set my work down. This is something that like we do not talk about as real estate agents or leasing agents. Like if you're working in a business where it's always, where it's commission-based, you like have a f underlining fear that if you set down your work for a day, for a weekend, if you take a week off, that you feel like you're going to miss out on a huge opportunity to make a lot of money. And you will never hear 
people that are in this industry or in a industry that's commission based that are like pushing you and urging you, inviting you to take breaks. And this is something that I had to learn for myself that it is absolutely necessary in order for me to be a great real estate agent, a great broker, a great leader, a great reference for somebody who is dealing with a stressful time in their life looking to move. It's important for me to be able to stop, recharge, recalibrate just who I am as a person so that I can provide the best that I can to my clients, to the agents that work underneath me, and to our community of people in real estate. So that is something that I definitely urge people to do. Like me, I have like very strong boundaries. My phone goes on do not disturb from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Most of the time, I don't even look at my phone until 9 a.m. because I know that whatever's going on in the world of real estate, like there's more than likely not anything that's, especially in the apartment industry, that is going on that's so crazy that somebody has to have access to me after the hours of 8 p.m. or before 8 a.m. So although I may sometimes respond to text messages or answer calls before those hours, like I am very strong about making sure that I have those boundaries for myself. And I really encourage all of you guys to do the same. It is very, very important for us to be able to separate like this is my personal time for me and this is my time for for working. And oftentimes, like being in the industries that we're in, oftentimes those times overlap, but knowing the difference between like, hey, I had a really rough day or I had a really rough month and I need a break for a day, a weekend, a week, like it is so important. And as soon as I started to honor myself and create boundaries around myself and my business, my business started thriving because my energy was thriving. My people were like, people were seeing the difference in me. Cause like you can totally tell the difference between working with somebody who's burnt out, miserable, just doing this because they need to survive and they need that next check. Or you can tell the difference between somebody who is excited, um, eager to help you answer your questions, be there for you, be your point of reference. So that is the first thing that I wanted to invite you guys to do is to understand that you need to create boundaries around your work life balance and also give yourself permission to take breaks. I promise you, I know that it feels like when you're in a commission based job that you always have to be on the, the go. You always have to be able to answer that phone call or answer that text message as soon as possible. And although this may be somewhat true, I also encourage you to understand that just as much as you have money opportunities flowing to you and you feel like you need to answer every call right away or answer every text back right away, also understand that like when you're taking care of yourself, you are giving out like better customer service, better energy, and that's also going to be bringing you more clients. If you are just constantly making sure you're rushing to the phone, but you're giving like not great energy because you're so burnt out, that's not going to be somebody that someone's going to refer to their friends and family if they're like, oh my gosh, this real estate agent answers her phone every single time I call, but her energy is so horrible when I talk to her. I promise you, the person who maybe doesn't answer their phone but sends a quick text back um, but has positive awesome energy whenever you talk to them, that person's going to be getting referrals. So that's the first thing that I wanted to encourage you guys when it comes to um, your mental health and your well-being when it comes to being a real estate agent or being a leasing agent. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is the understanding that it is okay if you don't want to work with every single client. I know I've talked about this in previous videos, and this is, again, not something that your broker or your owner is probably going to tell you, but sometimes there may be clients that you are like, hey, I feel like you are just draining me of my energy. I feel like you may be wasting my time and I'm going to direct my energy somewhere else. I recently had to do this with one of my clients. Like I, this person was like, hey, I have this huge budget, all of this stuff. But he also gave me the energy and the vibe that he was 
wasting my time that he was not really looking for what he said he was looking for or that he had no idea what he was looking for. And I decided, hey, I'm not going to cut this guy loose, but I am going to set up boundaries with him. I am going to let him know, hey, it sounds like you still have some things that you need to work out um, as far as like deciding what you want to do. Please follow up with me, you know, whenever you've kind of sorted that out. And I continued to follow up with him here and there. But as far as allowing this client to parade me around all over the city, um, text him at all hours of the day, the night, I decided, hey, I'm going to put up boundaries and not allow this client to um, to really drain me of my energy when it seems like they don't really know exactly what they want. So I know this is kind of like a controversial thing to say, but sometimes it's okay to cut a client loose or to set up boundaries with the client. Um, I'm really big about letting my agents know, people that have worked underneath me, that it is your job as a real estate agent or even as a leasing agent to set expectations for people that you work with. It is okay to tell them, hey, I, you know, it's 8 p.m. I know you're really excited about possibly moving. I can't wait to help you, but I will send you more information in the morning. It is so important to understand that that is okay. Me personally, I used to be somebody who felt like, oh my gosh, somebody texted me at 10 p.m. I need to hurry up and send them information at 10 p.m. or else they're going to go find the information somewhere else or they're going to find another agent that's willing to be working for them at midnight. And I will tell you, I put a stop to that. I had to realize what my value and what my worth was and say, hey, just because I'm like spreading myself and pulling myself so thinly across my clients and trying to have a personal life, trying to run a business, that doesn't mean that I don't have value if I decide to put a boundary in place and say, hey, I will get with you tomorrow morning. I promise you, if your client really wants to work with you, if they believe in your value, they are not going to, um, they're not going to give up on you if you decide to put that boundary in place and say, hey, I will get back to you. Um, in eight hours. And which this brings me to my next point. And this is something that, again, I've had to learn the hard way and realizing that my value does not depend on, you know, what clients may or may not decide to work with me. In this industry, we find that there are so many people that are out there that are, um, really just looking for like the the best deal or they're looking for, um, you know, really it boils down to money. Like they're looking for who can give me what. And I know a lot of times I see real estate agents that are like, oh my gosh, I lost this client because they went with an agent that was giving them $500 back or, oh, um, you see a property that's like struggling with leasing, but their competitor down the street is offering three months free. Like it's really easy to start to feel like your value depends on the people that you are closing. Yes, we need to be closing clients. Yes, that's how we make money. We work on commission, but also understanding that things are not black and white. You can't say, oh, I'm a horrible leasing agent or I'm a horrible real estate agent if you've had three clients ghost you or if you've had three clients decide to go with another property or with another locator. Like that, um, that should not dictate your value. And that's something that's super important to take note of and to just be aware of. Yes, you can take that information and say, okay, how do I need to re-navigate like my sales process? Like, do I need to be offering something that my competitors are offering? Yes, it's important to take in that information, but definitely do not feel like something is wrong with you or that you're a horrible leasing agent or that you're a horrible real estate agent if you've lost some clients. It happens to the best of us. It's just a part of the nature of the game when you're working in a people-based industry, especially when it comes to sales. There's always going to be somebody who like gravitates more towards this person's personality or this person's sales strategy. Or even if you're working, if you work on site and you work at a property, there are always going to be people that are more attracted to like a certain location or a certain building or a certain floor plan. Like some things are completely out of your control. And it doesn't, you shouldn't define your personal value or your professional value based off of if you've lost a couple of clients this week or even this month. I know me personally, 
I can go through spells where I will um, have clients that ghost me or clients that just decide to not put my name down or whatever the, the issue is. But then I also will have spells where it's like I have clients coming out of the woodworks that are like, oh my gosh, you helped me for five years. I'm so excited to use you again. Or I'll help people that will say, oh, I've had several people recommend me to you. Like you kind of go through spells. It's the highs and lows of being in sales, regardless if you work on site, if you're a real estate agent. Like I have learned not to define my value based off of who's working with me and who's not working with me. I understand that just like everything in life, it's like an ebb and flow. And these are like really, really, important things to consider and to think about. And this is ways that I help myself not get burnt out. Um, as I mentioned before, like setting aside breaks, work-life balance, understanding that my value does not depend on um, who is or isn't working with me, and also understanding like when I need to set boundaries with, with clients. These are things that are super, super important. Another thing that I've learned over the recent years, especially as I've dove in deeper into like personal development and um, getting more interested in like mental health, is that it is okay to understand that you're having like a low time or a high time and just being at peace with it and understanding that we don't have control over everything. I think that's probably one of the hardest things that people don't really comprehend when it comes into being an entrepreneur or working in sales is that things are like up and down all the time. When your livelihood kind of depends on the commission check that you are making that month or that week, um, regardless if you work on site or if you're an independent agent, when your livelihood is like just kind of a roller coaster, you have to learn to operate in the shades of gray. Like nothing's black and white. Everything is always ebbing and flowing and moving. And that is a really hard thing for people to get used to is understanding that things are always changing. You have no control over the majority of it. And you have to kind of just live in flow and allow things to come and go. Like, I know I just said a lot of metaphors, but it's very true. Um, Something that I see a lot is people are like, oh, I have to be in control. I have to know what's going to happen next. I need to have certainty. And that is not what it's like to be in real estate. That's not what it's like to be an entrepreneur. And if you work on site, you understand that it's not, you don't, sometimes you don't know like what your commissions are going to be that month. Like, and you have to be okay with the highs and lows of the business. As I mentioned earlier in this video, sometimes you're doing great and sometimes you're not doing great. And you have to understand that regardless where you're at right now, regardless what your situation is right now, that always can turn around tomorrow or a week from now. And that's something that I think is really important for people when it comes to burnout or mental health in the industry is to understand that you really don't have control over much, um, not only in this profession, but also in life. And you have to kind of enjoy that. You have to kind of be inviting that energy in and say, hey, you know, today might have not been a great day, but I can't wait to see what tomorrow brings. And I promise you that living with this type of energy is going to help you avoid burnout, help you understand that like things are always shifting and changing. And it's just going to like overall help you have a better energy about the way that you are working and operating. Um, and this all kind of ties in together. Like once you understand that you really don't have that much control, once you understand like letting go of the control, you start learning it's okay to set boundaries, it's okay to have a work-life balance. And then you start understanding that like your self-value does not depend on how much how many clients you close today. Like you could potentially close even two clients out of 10, but if you served those two clients like a freaking rock star, who's to say that you're any different or any better or worse than somebody who closed 10 clients, but they did kind of like a mediocre job. Like everything is very relative. We should all just be, um, 
very open to just the different experiences and just the evolution of our process when it comes to being salespeople, when it comes to um, working as a real estate agent or working on site. Like we are always constantly changing and learning and growing and it's okay to have those ebbs and flows. So I really wanted to make a video about the importance of mental health, the importance of avoiding burnout because I will tell you this industry is a great industry. Like I love being in real estate. I love the apartment industry. I love it. But I will say that there have been points in my career when I wanted to give up or even when I did take a long pause and I thought that I was giving up on the industry altogether. But since then, I have learned the importance of holding boundaries, creating space for me to be a human being and not just always being worried about making money. Um, and also understanding that my self-value is much bigger than the amount of money that's in my pocket or the amount of clients that I've helped that day. So I wanted to make a video about this because I think it's super, super important and it's not talked about enough. And I'm going to continue on this series about talking about mental health, talking about burnout, talking about just being the best version of ourselves that we can, not only as people, but also as real estate agents or leasing agents. It is so important. So if you liked this video, please comment below. I want to know what is your current situation? Are you working on any of these things? Have you felt burnout in the past? I want to know in the comments below. Um, and please, please subscribe to this channel. Share it with somebody that you know if this resonated. And I will see you guys in the next video.